winning, the jump in prestige, the jump in glory happens at these matches. Winning a match to cement yourself into the top cut of World Championships can be a player's most stressful, most important match in their Pokemon TCG history or in their career. I'm sure these players are feeling a lot of stress, a lot of anxiousness, mm -hmm. but also a lot of excitement for what the future might look like if they can win this intense win and in match here at the World Championships. Yesterday, we saw how calm and collected all of these players were, very confident just heading in, knowing that they were just going to make day two, and that was the first step in their journey towards that championship title, but now that it's actually the moment of truth, we're seeing the cracks start to show. The players are shaking up a little bit. And even though we have the most seasoned veterans from all around the planet, you know, this is where, you know, your metal and your mental fortitude is really tested. Yep, I'm excited to find out who we're going to be featuring here. We're ready to send it down. It's a surprise for me. We're going to figure out who our two players are that are competing both at 5, 1, and 1. Let's see if we can figure this out here. It's going to be Kaiwin Kabave up against Caleb Patton. Kaiwin, a player who has dominated in the Oceania Regionals, mm. actually top cut the last World Championships playing Pikachu and Zekrom. It's been three years. I'm sure Kaiwin wants to get back into that same position, get revenge for getting knocked out in top eight cut, lost his top eight match to that year's champion, Henry Brand. Caleb, a solid player from the United, or from the North American region, rather, playing mm. Mew VMAX Genesect. We haven't gotten to feature it too much so far today, but this is where Mew is going to show us what it's got. And Palkia, of course, what else can we say about Palkia? One of the strongest decks. It's here to show that it can stand up to all of the big bad bully decks that have existed <laughs> for months and months now. Precisely. The Mew deck is the old grizzled veteran of the metagame, the deck that everyone else had to adapt to and play around and tech for. And Palkia is now the new bad kid on the block, the next monster of the metagame. Wow, two Sobble Prize. So that's a big deal for Kaiwin. Big slowdown. Yeah, Mew is a list that can really punish you if you have any sort of a slow start. It's not that Mew got weaker. Players stopped bullying it. And as more cards were added to the form, at just more decks were kind of able to emulate a similar amount of speed and power. You know, Palkia using the battle VIP pass now, and now we have that glorious showdown. Caleb already showcasing some tech here with the Oracorio, that lesson in zeal trying to reduce damage and mess with the math. But Kaiwin looks like to open us up here in the final round, round eight of Swiss World Championships, do or die time, and Capacious Bucket is the beautiful opening listen, of I'm, choice. Listen, I'm excited to get into things here. This is a big time match for both of these players making top cut. Can't stress it enough what you want to do at these events and open up those doors to traverse through that bracket. Capacious Bucket's a good way to start things out, but we're going to have to see something else like a concealed cards, maybe draw some more cards. Kaiwin is on this list that's playing four copies of Battle VIP Pass. It's a card that is very strong. And wow, look at this poor start. No Ooh. Battle VIP Pass. Kaiwin's going to be playing with essentially a 56 card deck for this match. Cannot play any more of these Battle VIP Pass. Oh no, this hand is also terrible for Caleb. What? I don't think there's anything, not even a Mew V2, Mew V Max 2 double turbo. And it looks like a stadium as well. Going to be forced to attach to this Genesec. There is nothing going on in either player's hands. The slow start from both the sides. The players can't do anything. And attach and rule the region from Kaiwin. There's nothing happening. Rule the region. This has been an, an attack that you aren't supposed to use. It's just there to fill up space on the card. And we've seen it over and over and over again on the stream. And a top deck of fusion energy. It can attach the Genesect. One more means it will attack, but... It's just a pass back. Just over. a pass back. This is a top deck. Okay. Irid is going to blow this game wide open. This is where the match really starts. We decided to jump into the future, Ethan. No worries. Now the battle explodes. Look at this hand for Kaiwin. That was such a bailout. There is absolutely nothing going on. This Oricorio being weak to water means that it will be knocked out from this subspace swell. <laughs> from there, it just comes down to what cards Kaiwin wants to grab. At this point, a level ball just... can get searched out. Double that can check. go ahead and grab the Sobble, but 
At this point, it feels like, would you rather just go and grab something like a way to search out the Greninja to draw some more cards? And there smartly enough, the Greninja gets selected. There's way too many water energy in this hand. Let's get, let's go ahead and throw some in the discard pile and draw some cards while we're at it. This is the beauty of the Palkia engine. The Irida is basically a star birth. Get that Radiant Greninja down, start using that concealed card. You can discard one energy from your hand to draw two. And now all of the resources are going to come together. Now that there is a deck like Palkia V-Star that has this explosive opening, this incredible speed to begin knocking on the doors here, Caleb is now getting massively punished for such a slow beginning. Wow, even after a double concealed card with the scoop up net, there is no Sobble or Palkia backup. This will luckily take the knockout. As we will see subspace spell knocking out the Oricorio. Taking Highland. one prize. Oh, just still doesn't take the Sobble. <laughs> the prize. Does get the Irida off the prizes, though. That is more than welcome in Kaiwin's open arms. All right, now we've got Genesis. It's another fusion energy. Okay, so now we can use Technoblast. <laughs> is there a way for this to end? I'm trying to see if that's possible. That's all you can do is Technoblast. And now it's back over to Kaiwin. Still has the uh, Palkia V-Star ready to go. Hopefully we can get this bench filled up and maybe knock out this Genesec V. It's not that much of a stretch. I think it's there. As long as uh, Kaiwen can fill the bench up maybe and, and get something here. It looks like Kaiwen's playing fast. I think the Choice Belt is there. Full bench Choice Belt will get the knockout. So uh, we'll see if that's there. The Zigzagoon is in hand. There it is. One, two, three. Is there the Mana V? The Mana V is there as well. Zigzagoon? There's the math. There it is. Choice there Belt it in is. Subspace Swell taking the knockout. A quick game one for Kaiwen. He's so close to advancing the top cut. Lightning fast first game. That's what you get when you have two decks go off to a slow start, but are known for their explosive power and their explosive potential. As soon as that Irida top deck came through, Kaiwen skyrocketed towards victory. You're never going to see a game between these two decks pass back and forth like that ever again. Wow. That was that is something you will only see at the World Championships and the most tough matches where you're expecting this back and forth battle between both players it just comes as a shock of surprise when both players decks meant to be so consistent for battle vip pass it's meant to be able to have these starts where it goes off and gets a little bit more aggressive in the early turns and found zero of those cards had no opportunities whatsoever and caleb Patton now on death's door in swiss round eight the final opportunity to qualify for the top cut is now at a massive disadvantage the only safe Saving grace is that there's plenty of time left in this round that if it does go to a game three, these players will have plenty of time to make sure that third game finds its rightful conclusion. Caleb just sweetening the deal, making things a bit more exciting for us and is already getting set up to run it back. Yep, so Caleb's gonna be starting things off, I am almost certain. We'll see how these opening hands look a little bit better. Oh my, the hand is not looking great. There's no battle VIP pass, at least for Kaiwen. Kaiwen does have the, and you, you already see, that Caleb is just not feeling it at this point. Mm -hmm. He's gonna need a top deck to bail out. We'll take a look at the prize cards and see, oh boy, well, those top decks are not looking as good. They was close to the top of the deck, but not in the hand. Boss's orders and Palkia over on Kaiwen's side. And here we go, what's the top deck for turn? It's a Rotom Bone. There's nothing that can be played in this hand. No Mew down. You can stack the deck for the next turn, but there's no way on the on the winning. The Oricorio start again? Yes, Oricorio again. There's a Genesect and a few enemies, no. but there's no way to get Battle VIP pass to thin the hand down. And there's two of them in the prizes. Even less of a chance of getting it on the first turn. Genesec, this is looking like massive deja vu to me, Ethan. Yeah, boss's orders, power tablets, energy cards, but none of those a way to find any Pokemon. Bone a friend. Use your lifeline. You got a call here on the Rotom <laughs> phone. Listen, you can call whoever you want, but they're not coming until tomorrow. <laughs> But now looking through the hand, seeing is there any way I can tie this hand together? It, we know it's card games. Things like this can happen, but to have it happen twice in a row here where the most clutch opportunity you need happens, at least there's a Mew V we can try to thin down and draw. No, there's no way. There's two energy in the hand. And no. there's, I believe, I mean, I guess there's a Mew V. I, maybe you can get down to one card. Potentially you get one card, but from there, I, this is just so unfortunate this is for Caleb. Absurdity. There's no other word for it. 
this is something you, you do not see ever happen in these matches. This is just... We've seen it happen, you know, a severe mat, like just concentration of variance for one game. Sure, yeah. But to have it come back around right back to back is unheard of. In probably maybe what is Caleb's most important game that has ever been played in his life at this point. A win to get into the World Championships top cut to cement yourself on that resume of players who have done that before in history. Yeah, no, there's there's a boss's orders in combination with he has to pass. This is incredible. All right, back over to Kai there's Wing. an Irida in hand. Kaiwen can get set up. There as it normal. is. The Irida ties this all together for Kaiwen. You'd think that starting with the Glarian Zigzagoon might also be an awkward start, but Irida is the miracle worker coming through once again. Kaiwen is apparently destined to make this top cut. This is going to fetch the battle VIP pass for turn one. This is going to fetch Radiant Greninja, etc., etc., all the way down towards a pretty clean victory. I know that Mew, with its ability to draw so many cards with Genesect V, can make miracles happen. And this is going to be the most clutch Mew V Max game we'll ever see if Caleb is actually able to put up a fight here and it doesn't, uh, and it's not just another turn two, turn three, just knockout concede. This would be one of the greatest comebacks I've ever seen. At, in general, at the World Championships for sure, if Caleb is able to pull out this game with Mew of all decks at this point, there's the Hisuian Heavy Ball. That will grab the Sobble out of the prize cards. So at minimum, getting an even stronger setup. No way to disrupt the hand in Caleb's list. No way to disrupt the bench. Nothing like Avery available. So pretty much Kaiwen is able to set up as he chooses to at this point. The setup is completed, and Caleb has to play a massive catch-up game. We have one Genesect in the, uh, on the bench, and that's it. I guess the only saving grace, or maybe even a bit of a downside is that the VIP passes are in the prizes because now that's less fodder that you have to discard for your Kramomatics, etc. And incredible draws there. Draws into a Palkia and the Palkia V-Star for the following turn. It's just, you're, you have a situation where mm -hmm. you have two completely different mentalities. Kaiwen is off the moon right now, has an excellent start. His opponent is threatening nothing on the following turn. Everything is going great, and for Caleb, it's all going wrong. Nothing is going right. No Pokemon are in play. There is nothing happening on the board. Nothing even happening for the following turn turn either. These two disparities of of emotions and competence and everything mm -hmm. that they they share. It's it's so different. It's oh boy, we're they gonna have really the get into there. Split down the middle it, like it, this it between, is, yes. you know, uh Shangri-La in the depths of the abyss. Uh, Caleb's gotta pull something out. Kaiwin with the most excellent start he can possibly get. Knows the Mew V is there and Escape Rope will come out. This really just comes down to Kaiwen. Do you feel confident that your opponent can put together something random? There is technically a world in which uh, the, the Mew can attack, rather, or a Meloetta attacks. There is a mm -hmm. technical world where four Fusion Strike energy can get put into play this turn. So do you put the Palkia up, or do you think your opponent's going to get there? Um, catcher. Yeah, so uh, Asabo will come up. Here's a catcher. It is heads, so it is going to bring the Palkia. These are going to have to be a set of incredible cards at this point. Power Tablet gets played. The only out here, really, for Caleb is to try and go for something like a Meloetta. Here's two cards off of this. What is it? Quick Ball means the hand can get thinned down and a Fusion Energy as well. But if you attach that Fusion Energy, you can't attack with Meloetta this turn. I think Caleb understands that. Getting rid of Boss's Orders. Mm -hmm. The problem, however, is you have to draw, you have to grab Genesect here off of this. You can't grab Meloetta to attach because you're out of Fusion Strike systems with how things stand. So Genesect V going to come down, going to draw back up to four cards now. So it's going to be three more attempts at salvation for Caleb. And this isn't even to try to get a win. This is just to catch back up. This is just trying to get some sort of stabilization, some chance at being a threat. You're just so far in the red at this point, if you're Caleb, we have to put all of our eggs in one basket. Genesect V, it's all up to you. Fusion Strike System and attaching the energy just to draw one extra card. Yeah, one, two, three, four. Yeah, this attachment means that there's going to be an attempted Technoblast. Do we see the Alessa Sparkle? That's the only way to make this happen. The energy's been committed. No, it looks like a couple of power tablets. Double turbo energy has to just retreat into Oricorio. That signals there's nothing else in the hand. Another bench of the Mu V. 
And it looks like that's going to be it for now. Back over to Kaiwin. Wow. It's now his chance to run away with this game and seal the deal. Yeah, a single Irida here will mean that the double cross your play is online, has access to training court, can utilize that to bring the energy back and concealed cards. That Genesect is looking mighty delicious on the bench with two fusion strike energy. Will limit a lot of Caleb's options going forward and that would just add insult to injury at this point. Yeah, it, again, Caleb had the opportunity to, to try to get a threat down at the very least, but now Kaiwin is just about to put the lid on this game. A quick 2-0, probably the quickest we've ever seen. And a huge grab there finds the Irida. That will guarantee the double cross with your play if Kaiwin wants to go after this Genesec can make things simple. Could also go after the Mew V on the bench. There's a lot of lines and a lot of arguments for both play, but still think that getting rid of two fusion energy is just going to provide a lot of value down the line. And uh, Kaiwin agrees to at least get something rolling, get set up. Thinking about playing this Irida or Drizzile first, but going to just go ahead and start things off with the Irida. Right, and here's the important thing, right? Kaiwin is enjoying a fabulous position, but still taking his time, making sure that everything is sequenced properly. Still plenty of time left in the round, not letting this boon, you know, trick him into playing a bit too quickly than he needs to, using all the time that's allotted, and uh, just making sure that you keep it clean. And even with a quote-unquote free game, you still have to execute. Yeah, so this has to grab Capacious Bucket, and the second Drizzile is going to have to grab uh, something else to switch it looks like at this point, or at least Kaiwin thinking about grabbing the Capacious Bucket. There really isn't a potential otherwise mm -hmm. to attack, so that will find the Water Energy Concealed Cards in. already being used for the turn. Trading Court was able to bring that back to discard the energy, and here's the second one. Looking through the deck, we only see the Cross Switcher, and right away it's grabbed. We'll have to see what Kaiwin decides to target down, but essentially with how things are rolling and how ahead he is at this point, it's very easy for him to just go, I'm going to take two prizes here, two prizes there, and then my last two to close the game out. Yeah, easy peasy. You just have to you just have to go in and grab what's yours. The victory is within Kaiwin's grasp and everything is coming up roses, the sequencing. You know that as a Palkia player, all the reps and training that you've put in, you've done this exact combination tons of times. Here comes the star portal, getting the energy distributed around. Beautiful, just uh, uh, threats, <laughs> just set up, ready to go. Has the second piece of the cross switcher, pulls up that Genesect V with those two, as you said, Ethan, delicious fusion energies on there. Gonna get the knockout to take two prizes, and now that's half of Meloetta's power into the discard pile. Yeah, wow, that is a huge time play there. Able to take the knockout onto the Genesect, looking to see what prize cards he was able to grab. Looks like drew into uh, what looks like, or rather the card, prize cards were rearranged here. So we'll have to see exactly what cards Kaiwin mm -hmm. got access to. I mean, the hand here for Caleb is not much going on. Has access to Kramomatic. <laughs> with, with all the luck, truly this is a heads here. Oh. Tails on the Kramomatic. That is an exact replica or, or replication of the luck that is mm -hmm. befalling Caleb at this point. Nothing going right. You can utilize Rotom Phone, but I think even if Caleb looked through every card and just chose any specific one off of this Rotom Phone, it's not enough to solve this issue. Yeah, you put the card on top, but it's just not going to be enough. There's not another uh, Fusion Strike system to use to even draw here. And now we've got just Mew V hanging out in the active. No threat potential as of yet. And Kaiwin has two origin form Palkia V stars powered up and ready to go. And even with a small bench on Caleb's side, Kaiwin is able to supplement that very easily. And it's just such a shame here in round eight of the Swiss. But Caleb is playing it out like a champ. Just going to free retreat once more. Wow. Has the Oracorio back in the huge. active. Concealed cards is available. Already has the boss's orders drawn off the prize cards. This can target down the Mew yet again. And this is just, oh, this is exactly yep. what you want to see. There it is. Genesect being brought up into the active. The bench Pokemon are already there. It's dealing 220 damage. Still enough now, even with the Oracorios. Ability lessons in zeal can also utilize training court and keep the energy in hand for next turn to concealed cards. Everything is going Kaiwin's way. He is so close to winning this set. Yeah, having the training court just to fuel that radiant Greninja is just so clean. And there's the knockout, gonna take two more prizes. 
And now the Fusion Strike systems are offline, but there is one more clutch. Genesec to draw back up to four. I can fill the hand up, and what is there? A you cram, can... okay. New VMAX is there, importantly. The fact of the matter is that two power tablet are already the discard pile. Mm -hmm. So there's a world in which has happened. It is a heads, okay. So this can find another Genesect, potentially. There are already two down in the discard pile that have been knocked out. And that also means that for the rest of the game, Caleb is going to have such limited draw, only access to two Fusion Strike abilities. What are the options even here? It looks like the Genesect isn't even available at this point. What can you find? All your opponent needs to oh, do... Oh, that's right. It is, it is in the prizes. prizes. It is prized. Wow. That means it's not even available to draw more cards. This is so heartbreaking for Caleb at this point. There's no card in this deck that can save you from the situation. Even hitting the heads on the cram is not enough. I've never seen a Mew VMAX deck this far behind. And yeah, even with the Battle VIP pass, the Quick Ball's uh, locked in there. There's no way you're gonna get that Genesect V. We have Mew VMAX at the very least, but now with all of those power tablets used way earlier, you weren't able to weave in attacks to use those. It was purely for hand thinning, just trying to dig yourself out of this hole. And now Caleb, it has to try to think, is there one last ditch plan I can go for here? Rose Tower gonna draw a couple more cards. Yeah, there's no combination here that can do it. There's the power tablet and another chromatic, but uh, you need the power tablets to make things work anyway. So uh, we'll see exactly what the line is. This is, yeah, it's just going to pass the attack here for 190 damage. And the action is on Kaiwin. There is 100% a route to play this game out. Here we go. Action is on Kaiwin. We know access to both crosswitchers are here. There it is. There's the evolution incense. This can go ahead and grab the Shady Dealings Inteleon. You see the crosswitchers already getting put to the top of the deck. There it is. Shady Dealings Inteleon. Double crosswitcher up one of the two prize Pokemon. And Kaiwin does it. He's going to advance to top cut here at the World Championships. It was handed to him on a silver platter. No doubt about it, but he executed beautifully regardless, played clean and got it. This is card games, it happens, but obviously Kaiwen, as you said, has been dominating the Oceania region and is ready to once again participate with the best of the best to prove that even with this round eight win, he still deserves that top cut slot. What a wild set, Adam. That was... <laughs> this it, it's it's only here on this stream where you're going to see games like that. I've never seen a a run like that. The baddest of bad beats. That was you you hate to see it. I, I can't say it yeah. any other way, but you it just you you feel for Patton at that point. There's nothing else he could do. There is no line of play or sequencing or decision making mm -hmm. that led to his defeat. It was just the fact that a deck that some would consider the most aggressive and consistent option because it has so many ways to dig for Pokemon that can just draw and fill your hand up as soon as the first turn. There was no way to find any of those. Not just in game one, tried to bounce back game two. There was nothing at all. Nothing at all all this is an example of uh relativity you think of a deck having really bad luck and you oh that's really unfortunate but then there's the extreme where the luck is so bad it just becomes a spectacle unto itself and i'm just so glad that you were here and everyone at home was here to witness this because now if the internet didn't exist and somebody told you that this game had happened oh you missed this crazy game i saw at the world championship tournament you wouldn't believe it uh, i still don't believe it <laughs> i don't <laughs> think just that... saw it and you, i can't believe it i that did not feel like a, a winning to top cut at the world championship yeah. so that, that felt like a game that you have when you're testing a deck for the first time and you're you're looking and you're you're trying to figure out okay well what is my deck work or not and no, no deck that should be at that point in the, in the World Championship should function that way, but it's it's no fault of Patton at that point. It's yeah. just, it's the de decks have variants. We've seen it now twice on stream, two of our games.